Hello, class. I uh, am going to do a lecture. It's going to include several things. Uh, hopefully, we get to kinematics of rotation. I'm going to start off with uh, sort of a, a, a example. It, it's along the lines of an example I gave you earlier that I didn't call projectile motion, but actually in the uh, um, title of the thing, I think I did put projectile motion, but this is really, you know, projectile motion problem. Uh, basically along the same lines as we had before. Um, and, uh, gosh, you know, should I even do it? Um, I'm going to say no, right? Um, because it's just, I'll do it. I'll do it. It'll be a quick one. All right. So he's uh, got a 20 foot tower, right? He's going to throw it. You know, I had it at uh, 30. I might as well, might as well do it. I think that that's uh, very similar to the one I did last time, but I want to use the two different equations. We did use two different equations last time. You know, why don't we do it at uh, 45 degrees and I'll just, uh, you know, figure the things out on, uh, as we go. So here's the, the problem. Uh, it'd be a simple problem. We'll get on to um, kinematics of rotation in just a second. So he throws it off there and let's say that that is 45 degrees. Now, I want to find out a couple of things. I want to find out what is the distance that this goes. And we want to do uh, our equation. So we've got two different types of e equations. If we look at the distance in the x direction, do our, we're going to do two separate independent equations. First, the distance in the x direction. Um, you know, we'll, we'll say that this is zero in the x direction. Of course, this is going to be 20 uh, feet in the y direction, right? So uh, the distance we've got is going to be zero. Uh, feet plus uh, 30 feet per second. That's what our velocity, uh, muzzle velocity, whatever you want to call it. This uh, is uh, V equals 30 feet per second. All right, this will only take a second to do anyway. Times, of course, the cosine of 30 degrees. And then we don't have uh, any acceleration, so uh, zero feet here too. And of course, so that would just be one half uh, acceleration in that direction um, times time squared. Uh, we don't have any, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, if we look at, uh, I don't know if we even have to look at, uh, we got velocity in x direction already, already right there. I mean, I could say that, but let's do uh, the, uh, let's figure out what our time is uh, in the uh, in the y direction. So we're going to do distance in the y direction. I've got 20 feet um, plus 30 feet per second times the sine of 30 degrees uh, minus one half times uh, 32.17 feet per second squared times uh, time squared. And of course, I forgot my time there, and that is a minus. So uh, if we look at our things here, just to get to our A is going to be um, 16.2. Uh, 0.08, right, minus 16.08. Our B for our quadratic equation is going to be 30 times the uh, sine, 30 feet times, 30 feet per second times the sine of 30, which is going to be 15 uh, feet per second. Um, and then our uh, C here is going to be 20, all right? So let's throw that into our, equ our quadratic equation. Uh, the roots of the equation are going to be T equals minus B, that's 15, 
uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared 225, right? We've been here before in many ways, except I think I've got a couple different numbers there, times uh, uh, minus uh, four times a, 80 times, oh, four times, uh, well, whatever. Uh, so 80 times 16.08, and I get 1288. And of course, that's a plus because this is a minus. Uh, and all of that divided by uh, 32.17, because that's 2a, and that's a minus. All right, so if we do that, uh, I end up getting uh, 2. I'm just going to give these to you. You, you. you could do it yourself. 1.68 seconds or minus 0.747 seconds. All right. And of course, what those two things mean is uh, the, the 1.8, 1.68 seconds is the red line. That's t equals 1.68 seconds. And then the negative 0.7 seconds is this right here, right? If it was coming back down and it was here and I was firing it with 30 feet per second in that direction. If I, if I fire it with 30 feet per second in that direction, right? And it has the, the negative uh, gravitational attraction, it'll only take 0 0.747 seconds to get down here to that point. If I threw it the other way, instead of throwing it 30 feet per second up in the air, I threw it for 30 feet per second down toward the ground, it would uh, get there in 0.747 seconds. And that's what those two uh, things, the negative and the positive mean. And of course, we're much more interested in the positive because what we're trying to do is we're trying to see how far it goes. And that's what I wanted to do next was just to find out, uh, you know, how far uh, that actually goes. And, and what do we do? We now have the time now we can find out uh, how far we go. Oh, you know, I forgot T there. All right, sorry about that. Um, so we can find out how far it goes and S sub X then is 30 feet times the cosine of 30 uh, times time, 1.68 seconds. So I'm just gonna write this out here, 30 feet times the cosine of 30 degrees. So I don't have to actually figure that out. You guys can actually do that, 1.68 seconds. And the distance that I get is 44.6 feet. All right, we've been working on feet the entire time, so we have to stay with feet. Uh, and that's what it is. Now we could change that because we know that 3.28 feet, where have I seen this before? Equals one meter, right? 4.43 Newtons, I think it is, equals one pound mass. 2.2 .2, um, pounds mass. Oh, excuse me, did I say mass? I meant force there. 2.2 .2 pounds mass equals one kilogram. These are all things that you just want to, you know, keep in your head. 745 watts equals one horsepower, right? One kilowatt hour equals 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. So try to remember all of those uh, conversion factors. So, you know, really in electric, electric uh, power electronic, uh, electrical, <laughs> we use kilowatt hours and stuff. That's how you pay your electricity bill and everything. So, uh, you know, do that. Okay, just took a few minutes there to, to do that example problem. But what I want to do is I want to get into the kinematics of rotation. And, and we have all of these equations of motion and the kinematics that we've been looking at for you know, projectile, rectilinear motion, they all apply for angular 
uh, uh, rotational motion. Curve, you know. Uh, so let's do that. So let's say that the final angle is going to be the original angle plus my angular velocity times time plus one half my angular acceleration times time squared. Not only that, I also know that my final angular velocity is going to be my original angular velocity plus my angular acceleration times time. Right? Does everybody see what I've got there? That's right. It's an, it's analogous to the uh, rectilinear equations that you've been working with. Different symbols, but the same phenomena. We have to look at some things, though. You know, if you think about it, if I have an angle, let me just expand that angle a little bit, and I have an arc, you know, that subtends that angle. So let's say that this angle is theta, and let's say that my radius is r, and the distance of my arc is s. Then we know that s equals r theta, don't we? Of course, theta has to be in radians, right? Theta always in radians. Right, theta always in radians. I'll put a little star next to that. Because we're not using the sine or cosine or tangent, are we? We're not using any trigonometric functions. We're actually looking at uh, what is going on there, right? So if that's true, then can't I also say that if I'm looking at a velocity along there, wouldn't my velocity be just equal to my angular velocity times r? Does everyone see that? My velocity, my tangential velocity out at the outside is going to be equal to my angular velocity times r. And in fact, the units work out too because radians are dimensionless, right? So dimensionless divided by seconds times meters gives me meters per second, right? So I get meters per second, which is what I'm looking for for a, a linear velocity, right? Same thing can be said for my acceleration. My acceleration is just my angular acceleration times r, and that would be in meters per second squared because alpha is radians per second squared, right? As it would be. And uh, so that really is the kinematics of, of rotation. I want to look at an example uh, problem, actually a couple example problems, quick example problems, I think. Um, let's say, so here's my uh, example problem. I never write EX. I don't know why I did that time. But here's my example problem. Uh, omega is constant for two minutes at uh, 8,000. So 8,000 radians per second. Uh, can you imagine how many revolutions per minute that is? That's right, 8,000 radians per second would be like 80,000 RPM. Yeah, we're talking about a centrifuge here. A centrifuge that, uh, you know, of course, is making uh, rarefied uranium-235 for atomic bombs. So 8,000 radians per second is, is what this is turning at. And it's going to do it for two minutes, right? So times, well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just, uh, for two minutes, it's going to go at 8,000 radians per second for two minutes while it's going through all of its uh, uh, set up and boot up uh, procedures. Then 
it's going to go up. It's going to uniformly accelerate, right? It's going to uniformly accelerate to 16,000 radians per second over 30 seconds. And it's going to do that uniformly over that 30 seconds. It's going to accelerate to 16,000 radians per second. Here's my question. How many radians is it going to have gone through after it goes through that whole process? So the whole process really is just two minutes and 30 seconds, isn't it? It's two minutes and 30 seconds. Two minutes at 8,000 radians per second, then it's going to accelerate to 16,000 radians per second. Right? How many total radians is that going to be? Well, let's just figure it out with our equation that we've got right above there. The total amount of, of, ang of uh, radians that it's going to go through, and of course, we can then change that into revolutions, can't we? The total amount uh, is going to be the original, which is going to be zero radians plus the original, let me just put that there. Yeah, I did that there, I forgot it there. The original angular uh, acceleration, which really is, is uh, wait a second, uh, yes. The uh, original acceleration, um, So we can make this into, should I make it into two? No, no, we'll just keep it as one. So it's going to be going at 8,000 uh, radians per second, right? And it's going to do that for 120 seconds, okay? Then it's going to go, it's going to take uh, 30 seconds and it's going to go uh, the rest of the, uh, uh, increase the rest of the way to 16,000 radians per second. So plus one half times, uh, now it's over 30 seconds that it's going to, so it's going to increase from 6,000 to 8,000. Right, I'm just writing that in, final minus initial over 30 seconds, right? So that's radians per second per second. So that's radians per second squared. That's what I want there. That's my acceleration. Uh, uh, for uh, 30 seconds. Squared. Let me check something for a second. You know, I thought that I would just attack this on. I'm going to attack it on anyway, but I'm going to actually show you. I should have actually probably broken it into two equations. I think I'm going to lose some people here, but also I'm going to add on 8,000 radians per second times 30 seconds. Now, now, why did I do that? And I, I should do this in two things. Let's look at the first thing. We're going, the, the first uh, equation, so let's say uh, theta one, is just going to be 8,000, because we're just going, it didn't, it didn't start at zero, it started at uh, 8,000, constant uh, angular velocity for 120 seconds, right? So that, there, there's no acceleration part of this, that's 120 seconds. The, the second part of the um, uh, problem is that I'm going from the original 8,000 radians per second up to 16,000 radians per second. And that's where this part of the problem comes in, right? We still have zero for radians for, for the first part, but then what we're doing is we're adding the original, which is the 8,000, that's what we were going at, right? Radians per second, right? Times the 30 seconds plus uh, one half. 
and then times the uh, um, acceleration, 8,000. I'm not going to bother writing the other thing in there over 30 seconds. Um, times uh, 30 seconds squared. All right. And so that's where I got this equation from, the long equation. And, you know, I thought to myself, oh, no, they have, you know, they'll, they'll totally understand where I got that from. But then as I was writing it out, I thought, well, I'm going to write that. And then people are going to think, well, where did he get that last part from? Right. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to explain it a little bit uh, more uh, down here. All right. And uh, I think you can see these two together equal this, and that's why I, I put them there. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to solve that equation to find out what the total angle is over uh, that entire two minute, and 30, two minute and 30 second period for this centrifuge. All right. So let's just write these down. So uh, 8,000 times 120 seconds is 960,000 radians, right? And then we're going to add into that, uh, well, let's do this one. 8,000 times uh, 30 seconds is 240,000 radians, right? And then the last one, one half times 8,000 divided by uh, 30 seconds comes up to 120,000 radians, right? Oh, 30 seconds squared. You know, I better uh, double, just double check that. I, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> the case, but uh, 8,000 divided by 30 seconds times 0.5 times 30 seconds squared. So I could have got rid of one of those anyway. Yep, 120,000, so that's what we have. So those are the three different uh, uh, radians that we have to add up there. And that gives us uh, 1,320,000 uh, radians. All right, if I wanted to find out, um, I'm just going to find out what that is in revolutions. 210,000, 210,000, 084 revolutions. All right, and of course, what did I divide that by? I divided it by two pi, um, two pi uh, uh, radians in one revolution. I wish I could put that someplace. Two pi <laughs> radians equals one revolution, also one cycle too, right? As we know from electrical engineering. One cycle, one revolution, same thing. Uh, okay, so that, that gives us that. Uh, what was our average um, radial velocity? And what we can do is we could take uh, the entire amount here, th this many radians, and then just divide that right, by two and a half minutes, so that's 150 seconds. And what that would do, I'm just gonna put a little uh, uh, thing here. What that would give us is uh, 8,800 radians per second was our average uh, radio velocity. Right. Whenever I'm talking radial velocity or, or angular velocity, I'm really talking radians per second. You know, revolutions per minute, that's something that technicians use. It's not something that engineers use. Uh, always remember that. And I'm not saying, you know, technicians, great technicians will uh, be working in radians per second, too. Now, uh, I want to do, what do I have? This is a big problem. Uh, I have time. I, I have time. I just don't have the the room on the board. So I'm going to set up this problem and then I'm going to uh, finish this problem. I don't have a lot of time anyway, uh, on, on the next uh, uh, lecture. It's an elevator, all right? So I've got an elevator and this is where we're gonna start to apply 
our kinematics of rotation and, and looking at the, you know, later on we can look at the kinetics of rotation with this same uh, problem that we're looking at now. Now it's got a winch, right? Each floor, it's an elevator in a 100 floor building. Each floor equals three meters. So the, 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 the maximum height, right, of the building is 300 meters high. Tall building, it's a 100, 100 floor building. You know, so, so we're looking at the elevator though, and that's what we're most interested in is the elevator. Um, the elevator traverses 10 floors in 30 seconds. So it goes up or down 10 floors in 30 seconds. And of course, each floor is three meters. So 10 floors is 30 meters. Uh, that implies in 30 seconds that it goes one meter per second. Right, that's the velocity of the uh, elevator. That's the velocity of the elevator. But you know, also that elevator, the the cable for that elevator is going up and it's going around. You know, a thing, and I think a, another cable comes down, doesn't it? Or I, I have no idea, but something like that. So it's going up and it's going around. Now, what is the radius of that? That's what we want to find out. What is the radius of that? It turns, right? So, so our angular velocity, I shouldn't even, in fact, I'm not even going to use W. I'm going to use N because that's what we usually use for revolutions per minute. The winch turns at 100 revolutions per minute. Now you have all the information that anyone would have right? There's a second part to this problem too. Because this winch, the safety on this winch engages when n equals 1,000 revolutions per minute. That's the second part. That's part B of the problem. Part A of the problem is to analyze this and to find out what the uh, what the winch diameter should be for your design, right? You, you, you have, you know, some things, you, you have an idea, you know what you've got to do. It's got to be, uh, you know, uh, 10 floors in 30 seconds. This is the design of the elevator you're doing for whichever ever elevator company you're working for. So that's going to be our uh, uh, next uh, lecture. And, uh, and we're going to sort of leave projectile motion a uh, rectilinear motion behind. We're, we're going to leave the, even the, not the kinematics uh, and kinetics of rotation. We're gonna be looking at those a lot now, but we're going to leave the equations of motion and stuff behind. So all of that is, uh, of dynamics is starting to be behind us. We're really looking, you know, dynamic equilibrium uh, and, and, and things like that. But there's a lot of other areas like this in dynamics I wanna to get to as well. And, you know, uh, we have a lot of things in solid mechanics that we have to uh, uh, look at as well. There's just so much to look at in this course. Okay, I am going to uh, hold it there. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get into kinetics of rotation. Just seeing, we'll finish up this problem. And this is really, uh, in some ways, the last of the kin kinematics of rotation. Now we're going to get into the kinetics of rotation. Okay, see you there.